whether you are in the market to buy a home or simply curious about knowing what's happening in the real estate landscape. Every Sunday on this show, we share topical insights, trends and latest properties available in the market. Today, we highlight investment opportunities available on Mombasa Road, captured during our signature bus tour. It's a learning experience. It's good. You get to see a lot. Plus a full spectrum of an intimate project located in Kilimani, an area with a rich mix of culture. We had the bank on site, we had the architect, we had the project manager. The accessory spot, it's all about new ways to design your home with a pop of color. The property show begins right now. Engage with us on our social media handles. As always, there is something for everyone. Our property pick of the week gives us an exclusive behind the scenes of a developer. What goes on into putting up an intimate project where you wake up smelling the roses and what are the challenges that come along with it? Karibu sana on the show. Thank you so much, Nancy. It's such a pleasure to be on your show. Give us an overview and describe this beautiful project. Well, this project is called the Rose Garden and it's called the Rose Garden for a reason. It's because there actually is a central rose garden that every apartment has a view of. It's a property that has been in our family for many years, and a point came where my parents felt they wanted to develop it, um, and they started. They started with a renowned architect, uh, Mr. Wawero, and over time, they realized actually maybe this is a young person's game. So Mr. Wawero also handed over to Mr. Wawero Jr., who the head of the architectural uh, association and then we uh, my parents children continued with the project um, roses because my mother loved roses and she's no longer with us so that's the background that's how we started and how did you come up with the concept of only 31 units whereas we know most projects are 200 units 300 units and how has that journey been well what we knew is we wanted to build somewhere where we would like to live uh, okay, let's just be frank. I'm a Shags Modo. Uh, I grew up in Kikuyu with trees and birds and grass and um, I have lived in the city and I miss that. I miss that quiet, that sense of intimacy and my family, we all felt, let's do this. Let's build low rise, let's build quality, let's build somewhere that is minutes away from everything and yet somewhere that you don't feel that you're living with a whole world. Yeah. Let's talk about the amenities. What else are you offering? Well, the apartments are three bedrooms. Um, the, what we really wanted to showcase also was made in Kenya. You've heard that the architects are Kenyan. We are a Kenyan family uh, from my parents. My, my nieces and nephews are now also getting involved um, in, in the development. Uh, the wardrobes, when you have a look around, we'll show you. Those are handmade by a Kenyan company. Um, we wanted to show that Kenya can do anything. We can do anything in Kenya. Each of the bedrooms are en suite, which is standard practice these days. People don't necessarily want to share a bathroom with anyone else. There's a cloakroom off the living room so that you know your visitors are also catered for. Um, and we have three balconies. We have three balconies because we wanted an entertainment space off the living room. People are all talking nowadays about inside, outside living. Um, then we have a private uh, balcony off the master bedroom so you can get home from work, have your cup of tea or your glass of wine just quietly as you look at the roses and then you can put your stuff, that stuff that you don't want to look at on the back veranda, your gas cylinder, your rubbish, your laundry, um, your washing machine, whatever it is and that's tucked away at the back so nobody has to see your stuff and you don't either. All of the apartments have their own DSQ you can use it as a DSQ, you can use it for someone who comes and goes, that's you know up to however you want to use it. Um, on the rooftop, 
we also have an executive center because we're realizing a lot of us professionals are working from home. Sometimes you want to have a meeting, you don't necessarily want someone in your private space. So there's an executive center up there and there is also a gym. Um, standard practice, electric fence, um, CCTV, wired for Wi-Fi, wired for DSTV or cable or whatever is going to come next since, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, but it's wired for that. Um, and, and we thought that's important for, for the way people live today. And who is your target market for these units? Um, the C-suite. Um, you're a CEO, you're a CFO, you're an aspiring professional. That's who you want to be. Um, you want space, you want quiet, you want elegance, you want charm. Um, you are a professional uh, couple or a professional individual whose children have grown and gone. You're living in that big house, wherever it is, in Runda, in Karen, and you're thinking, what am I doing in this place? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, let me put this on the market. Go somewhere where, once again, I'm minutes away from everything, from my children, from my grown-up children, um, from the shopping centers, from Yaya, from the movies, from my friends. Um, but I'm living in a place where I'm contained and I have that beautiful garden to look at. You know, Kathy, coming up with such a project yeah. is not a walk in the park. No. What are the main challenges? Oh, <laughs> there's the challenge of jargon. You know, there's this thing, it's, it's a craze. We're Kenyans, we're building, we're developing. So you we think, okay, we know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> So you sit there and you're talking to architects, you don't understand what a, a plan looks like in a little while, now you're talking about, can I see the elevation? Because this isn't quite made, so you, ha you learn. You have to invest time. This is not like going to the lawyer where you say, write me a contract and the lawyer does their work and brings it to you. This one, you sit with, a, with, you sit with the architects, you sit with the project manager, you sit with the bank, you sit with uh, the engineers, you really have to be hands-on. Um, and that is a challenge because they speak their own professional language and you have to get them to understand your layperson's language um, and, and they don't even know that they're talking jargon half the time. So you're always, it's, 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 it's always catching up. In this particular project, what happened when we knew we were ready? We, have, we had the bank on side, we had the architect, we had the project manager, we were ready, we were going, we broke ground, oh we had God. the contractor, the lovely contractor, we broke ground, we had a wonderful ceremony, we had the church to pray, we thought, yes, let's go. Interest rates capped. The bank not really talking very much. <laughs> Just like... Okay, that was uh, a serious challenge. Yeah, so we had to start talking to the professionals. How do we do this? Talk to the contractor. Will you buy a unit? Talk to the marketer. What do you think we can do so that we can save costs but actually keep going, keep going, keep going? And finally, we're back on track after this year where we started with those elections that we're not talking about. And, you know, it was not a good economic year for anybody. Um, but that was when we thought we were ready and now we are thanking God we are finally back on track. When do you yeah. expect to complete these units? We should be completed by uh, the final quarter of 2019. Have you yeah. sold any? We have. We have had some investments. Um, so the, it's a mixture of two bedrooms and three bedrooms. The two bedrooms are all gone. Um, we have three bedrooms left on the market and, and we're looking forward to more investment. Let me show you around the apartment. As you can see, that's the grand entrance, a big wide doorway, so that when you come in with your big master bed, it can actually come through the door. Um, there's a cloakroom in the corner for your visitors. Uh, as you can see in the living room, um, there's ample seating, you can put your feet up. We have on that side um, additional seating um, for somebody to sit quietly and read a book or whatever it is. If you have a different kind of lifestyle, there's nothing to stop you putting your TV there. Yes. You can see there's lots of light yes. coming from the very big windows behind us um, and a door leading onto a very gracious balcony where you can entertain your family, your friends, and there's space for your barbecue, for a table and chairs, everything. This is the dining area. As you can see, although we've arranged it for four, um, you can easily seat as many as eight or eight, ten yes, yeah, yes, yes. in here. And 
Again, the big generous windows, there is proper burglar proofing so you can't fall out the window um, and the kitchen is beyond that. Can I show you the master bedroom? Let's go. Okay. As you can see, there's a door, Nancy, that you can lock behind you as you go into the private spaces of the house and leave behind the public areas. The corridor is wide, uh, it's generous. The master bedroom is here. There are two other bedrooms. All the bedrooms are en suite. This is the master bedroom. Wow. As you can see, there's lots of space. Um, the cabinets are made in Kenya uh, by a local company. They're wood um, and they're solid. They're not the stuff that falls apart after using them for, we know those styles. We decided we're not doing that style. Um, there's a veranda and there you can just quietly have your glass of wine, Beautiful. smelling the roses. Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah, because that's the view. All of the apartments look into the central garden, which is the rose garden. The master bedroom has a bathroom um, and it's well appointed. Again, it's a good space. Let me show you the, the kitchen, Nancy. One of the things I love is this, the wooden beams that we've put as, as much as possible around the house because that natural feel of wood is so beautiful. We also have uh, granite. Uh, this is Kenyan again and uh, excavated locally and then you know installed here. There's a pantry so there's adequate storage, there's a back veranda there that's where you can put your washing machine, you can put your gas cylinder, if you, you can put your rubbish whatever you want to put back there. It's a pretty big uh, generous veranda and behind that is a DSQ. So this apartment comes with its own DSQ which again you can use the, the way you like. One of the things I love about this kitchen is the number of power outlets and the level at which they are. Because, you know, in a, in a kitchen you want to be running your coffee machine as well as microwave. your mixer, your microwave, your whatever. You don't want to be limited. Again, the units, these are locally made by a Kenyan artisan um, and people who buy will have a choice as to their finish. That option is still open, but I love the wood finish. I love the wood finish as yeah. well. It's yeah. beautiful. So it's not just the foodies that we took care of. For all of the techies, we have taken care of the power outlet issue. So you can watch TV, you can charge your phone, you can do whatever you want. There are enough power outlets. Every room has more than enough power outlets, including these public areas of the living room and the dining room. Once yeah. again, congratulations. This Thank you. is a beautiful apartment. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for having us. So Imagine waking up to a beautiful scent of roses that's what you'll buy at Rose Gardens Apartments, as well as a great location, just minutes away from everything. Three balconies, the entertainment area, private space, and laundry area. The apartments are also internet ready. And I can tell you, most of the products are made in Kenya, supporting Kenyans. investment opportunities available on Mombasa Road captured during our just concluded signature bus tour. Let's see what they have to offer. Our bus tour adventure on Mombasa Road started at West Suit Studio Apartments, a great place to call home for students, young professionals and couples starting out in life, as well as an ideal investment option with good returns. Here is more. Welcome everybody to Westwoods. 
Uh, we're happy to see you here this morning. These are studio apartments that are designed for young professionals and uh, we have an accommodation comprising of 168 units. All of them are identical. They look the same, exactly the same. Each floor has 13 units and we have 13 floors. On the topmost floor level, we have a laundry room. Very good security features. We have CCTV cameras in the main gate in all the levels, all the apartments. And these are connected to a control room at the office and at the site office. We also have a site office here. Apart from that, we have access control systems whereby you will have an entry card access. So each occupant, resident or tenant or owner will get a card to access the building. There's only one access point and then there's an emergency exit in case of fire or anything. We have a backup generator that is for the common areas and all the facilities available. We have two high-speed lifts so you don't have to use the staircase. This will complete end of next month actually and we'll start renting them out. The rental value is around 25,000. The good thing about it, it's very close to all the amenities. So we have the schools, we have the hospital, the Ruby West Hospital down the road. We have Strathmore University, Riara University. So, and the town is just like walking distance. So we have a lot of commute available here. Uh, we already have a lot of rental inquiries as well. So it's very good for investment. We're only selling these at 2.95, but we're almost 95% sold out. That's why I've given you a new project, which is called South Suits, and that's available in South B area. Similar concept, same design, same size, and uh, yeah, everything is exactly the same. South Suite Studio Apartments is the answer to the affordable living concept in the heart of South B. This unique development consists of more than 132 self-contained studio apartments with a plinth area of 25 square meters. The project is strategically located at the corner of Kapiti Road and Sadi Road in South B with an easy access to the CBD, industrial area and environs. This development is an ideal housing solution for young professionals, students and couples that are starting out. Accommodation features include a generous kitchenette will be fitted with upper and lower cabinets for storage, space that can fit a regular sized cooker, microwave space alongside a medium sized fridge, a spacious bathroom accompanied by a vanity cupboard, bathroom sink, WC as well as a shower area. The living cum bedroom space is well laid out and spacious enough to fit a couch as well as a bed with the bedroom space having inbuilt wardrobes for storage purposes. The study area has a built-in desk with a granite counter and also a television space. Road route takes us to Bandari Apartments in close proximity to major social amenities, the SGR as well as the airport. This project prides in providing an ideal family living. Bandari Apartments are located off Mombasa Road, 5 kilometers from Nairobi city center. This property is easily accessible from Mombasa Road via Popo Road and the Southern Bypass. The development will comprise of three blocks of 198 three-bedroom units. The apartments come in two sizes, middle units of 168 square meters, while the corner apartments have size of 171 square meters. Bandari apartments offer the privacy of community living with high level security. Accommodation features include spacious lounge come dining opening to the balcony, open plan kitchen fitted with MDF high and low level cabinets and granite worktop, 
pantry, laundry area, visitor's cloakroom. All bedrooms are ensuite and fitted with MDF wardrobes, ensuite domestic staff quarter. the basic amenities from access roads, security, water, electricity, prototype designs and professionals to get you started on the property ladder. Next, Enka Gardens Kitengela. Enka Gardens Kitengela responds to the growing desire to live in a peaceful, beautiful and secure gated community with modern amenities. This 10-acre piece of land offers 50 by 100 acre service plots with a perimeter wall already in place. Enka Gardens offer an opportunity to build your home in a controlled development while offering you in-house consultancy on construction. Located 200 meters from the Nairobi Namanga Highway, Enka Gardens is 4 kilometers from Kitengela Town. Let's get one on one from a participant on the tour. I was interested in coming to Mombasa Road for the bus tour because the airport and I feel like Mombasa Road is growing in a good way and it's close to the national park so yeah there's that. I was interested in seeing the properties along this route because I'm interested in investing on this route. Spot on new ways to design your home with a pop of color. The things that you take in consideration when you're choosing furniture, first of all, you have to check the interaction between the architecture and what you're going to bring in. The colors as well will guide you uh, in terms of what furniture you're going to place and just the spirit of that place. There's always that spirit of the place. When you walk in there, what mood does it give you? After you've selected a theme, now you go into selecting the, the type of furniture that go with that theme. You will always check the locality of that house if it's in an urban setting, if it's a loft maybe, or if it's a country house, or a, a coastal house. All those have uh, different ways in which you can design to bring out that spirit of that place. You're going to select furniture that marry again with the colors of the existing walls, or maybe if there are curtains, what kind of curtains do you want? You have to have like a, a flow in the space. You don't want to just uh, place things that don't go well with each other. You also have to look at the textures that you're bringing there. You want to bring contrast, the element of contrast. For example, you can do contrast in very many ways. You can use color as a contrast. Also, you can contrast the space using different shapes. Like, for example, you can break a monotony of a certain setup by introducing a round table. Again, in the space, you want to have like that predominant object, the one that is um, above everything else. And what is that? It could be an accent chair, it could be a painting, it could be an accessory. So you take into consideration all that.
there's a lot that goes into designing of a space and uh, one of them is the inspiration that you have. For example, this piece, Masala. The word Masala comes from the sunset of the southern Mediterranean and what you have at that sunset is the, like you can be inspired by the colors of that sunset, which in this case, that is what inspired us. Uh, as you can see, you have the burgundy color, and that is usually very visible during the sunset. And then, of course, the dark brown to depict the color of the earth at that time. So I'll proceed to show you a piece that is also from the Masala collection. Again, it's the continuation of the same style and the same inspiration. So you have the warm colors of the sunset and the dark brown of the earth. So here we have the Bristol sofa set. As you can see, it is very stylish, elegant. It's very noble as well. It gives you that feel of royalty and it makes a statement. It's bulky, it works very well in uh, big spaces as well as uh, small spaces. The fabric that we've used is not very, very shouting in terms of the colors. The fabric itself is woven fabric. This one is very soft and smooth and it gives you those uh, clean curves in terms of the stitching and everything else. Now this sofa is very very comfortable and as you can see the ergonomics are just right and this is what you want for your space. The loft. As the name suggests it is a very tiny space and as you can see this is a very functional sofa and picking up from what we had discussed earlier on the use of neutral colors bringing out the airiness of that room as you can see it is lifted up it has some long legs that is just to give you that airiness in that room so that it doesn't feel too bulky now for this sofa it converts into a sofa bed that is the main function and again it fits into small spaces. For small spaces you need very subtle colors but for it not to be very monotonous we use like a pop of colors. You can use a blue, you can use yellow, you can use any color that just pops and doesn't compete with the rest of the space. For anyone who's looking to revamp or furnish their houses this is my advice to you. First, you need to work with a budget. Without a budget, you won't be able to know what kind of uh, furniture you want to get. Also, you need to come up with a theme. Let the theme be about your personality because you're the end user. We want to feel your personality when we come into your space. We'll be right back with more investment opportunities along Mombasa Road and much, much more after this short break. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Show. Next, more investment options available along Mombasa Road. But first, let's catch up with Banda Homes on their fully serviced plot offer. The Olive Gate Estate is located off the car road along Kenyatta Road, five minutes drive from the superhighway and 150 meters of tarmac. We are offering fully serviced plots. Each plot size measures 50 by 100, that is an eighth of an acre, where we provide graded roads, perimeter wall, very elaborate sewer line, electricity and water connections. Based on extensive market research and responding to a 
changing customer needs, we decided to offer plots for sale to accommodate those clients who have very unique uh, customer preferences in terms of their house designs and configurations. As earlier said, each plot sits on a 50 by 100, that is an eighth of an acre. Currently, it is selling for 2.75 million, where one is required to do a deposit of 1.2 million and the balance payable within four months. We are back on our signature bus tour. Our next stop is another site and service landscape in Kitengela. Let's have a look. To plots Kitengela, Kisinya, Embakasi, Utawala, under the river. Plot zetu zote to me subdivide into one eighth, one eighth, one eighth. Then after subdividing, we transfer the mother title to individual title deed. The reason why to not transfer our titles ni kwa sababu kuna watu wanataka kununua plots, yeah? na wanataka either to be financed, either from the bank, from your circle, and the rest. So once you may identify our plots, we we'll give you the title of that individual plot umechagua. This is under escrow scheme, about six acres, subdivided to 51 plots. The Tani Diaspora Estate is a gated community located 500 meters off Nairobi Namanga Highway, just a few kilometers from the ostrich farm. The neighborhood is comprised of many new controlled housing schemes. The plot is in the locality of KCA University, KAG University with close proximity to Sukas Hospital and Galaxy Hospital. It is ideal for student housing. The plots have proximity to an all-weather road, piped water and electricity. Next, Boston Estate. When it comes to modern family living, this project ticks all the boxes from constant water supply, tick, tight security, tick, beautiful green spaces and individual picket fences, another tick. An ideal neighborhood with transport links, schools, financial institutions, hospitals, shopping facilities, game reserves, hotels and restaurants, tick, tick, tick. Boston Estate is conveniently located along the Nairobi Namanga Road, just eight kilometers from Kitengela Town, in a quiet and serene environment. These three and four bedroomed homes are an impressive development of 64 units sitting on 50 by 100 each. The plinth area for the four bedroom missionettes is 185 square meters, while the three bedroom missionettes is 166 square meters. Each house is fitted with high quality fittings and fixtures and all the rooms are well lit. Accommodation facilities include spacious living area fitted with large windows that allow in natural light. The spacious dining area creates an airy space with large windows that allow in light. The kitchen area is not only spacious but also fitted with granite countertops, upper and lower cabinets, the stairway which leads upstairs to the bedrooms has been accentuated by a drop-down window which offers a beautiful view and lets in natural light. 
The master bedroom is en suite, fitted with spacious cupboards and a large window that allows in natural light. The second and third bedroom share a common bathroom. The guest bedroom on the ground floor is also spacious enough and fitted with spacious cupboards. Visitor's cloakroom, detached en suite DSQ, utility area, Finally, Almasi Apartments. This project comes with very high quality finishes. Here is what they have to offer. Almasi is in Sokimau, but Sokimau, they are uh, different sides of Sukimo. So now we're on this side. The national park is just down here. So one of the things that you'll have with Almasi, you'll have a very good view of the park. So we have um, 10 units. So the 10 units, some are furnished, others are not. As you can see, the area is pretty new. Uh, development is a bit controlled, unlike the other side of uh, Sukimo. So most of the people around here they know one another. So you come to a place where at least you have a community. Amenities, we have the supermarkets just close by. We have neighbors. There's a mall there. We have, we have hospitals. Um, if it's schools, there are so many schools around. Security, security is really good. The community around, they have people who guard at night. So at least, and we have security lights from uh, down there all the way to the road. Again, being that you only have 10 units, again it is not congested. So you not have an apartment where you have so many people. So you only have a few families living here, which I think is a good place uh, to bring up children. Almasi Apartments are exquisite properties located 3 kilometers from Siokimal Railway Station and Gateway Mall comprising 10 executive 3 bedroom apartments. The apartments overlook the Nairobi National Park and are less than 1 kilometer from the Nairobi Mombasa Highway. Accommodation includes well lit and large living and dining area leading out to a balcony open plan kitchen with granite countertops and fitted cupboards, dobe and pantry area in balcony area alongside kitchen, three spacious bedrooms, two ensuite with large windows with built-in wardrobes and drawers and laminate wooden floors, master bedroom with walk-by dressing area. The amenities include high-speed elevator, carbro driveway, two parking bays per unit, solar water heating, Bohol and underground tanks, backup generator, and 24 hour manned gate. Many of you may ask, why should you spend a whole day on the bus tour? Here is a participant's take on spending a day with us. A learning experience it's good you get to see a lot in one day I recommend everyone to do it because you get to learn a lot about the Kenyan market I've got to visit so many places that if I was to visit alone it would take me say weeks but uh, I've spent a day and I've really walked to so many places and uh, that is an eye-opener and it's also uh, making you understand how the market is. Next, expert legal and financial insights on the bus tour. Well, doing a property purchase, in my opinion, the best 
stage to involve a legal professional is at the initial stages of discussion of the offer. This is because you will need the advice of a lawyer to guide you during the steps of negotiating the offer, the payment of the deposits, the searches that you need to do even before you make any commitments in terms of deposits. So at the initial stages, just when you locate a property that you're interested in purchasing, at the same time you should um, engage a legal professional to advise you on the next step that you should take. Especially with what's been going on in the homeowners and property developments that are existing in our country. So the first red flag would be ensure that you get all your proper documentation while undergoing the purchase. Do not get into any rush transaction where anybody tells you that there, there is no documentation or documentation will be processed after. Make sure that you have all your papers and this would be the consents that are required, especially now the NEMA approval is very important. The certificate of occupation, the certificate of practical completion from the architects is also very important. The other thing would be just look out for where the property is located. If you see that there's a river around it, you'd obviously want to know whether there's a NEMA approval because of the whole riparian land issue. If the property is around an airport, around a forest, those are also key things to look out for. And if it's another thing of importance to note that in off-plan purchases, this is whereby you're buying property that has not been constructed. You need to be very careful to ensure that you make the right investment and not spend your money into a development that will never come into existence. At what point should the potential buyers engage a financial? One, after you've done your due diligence research and um, you've settled down that you now want to own a property or you want to own a home somewhere and uh, you don't feel like you have all the finances required to acquire a certain property, that's when you should look for a financier. Uh, should homeowners agree on the payment terms before committing to a financial? Yes, definitely they should because this one will give them the peace of mind of knowing how long they'll be paying this facility for and two, it will give them the ease of understanding how the procedures work because you understand the bank, like NIC Bank, we calculate probably maybe if you're using your payslip, we calculate on how much you can qualify for for this and then we give you the duration, putting in mind the amount that you're taking, the product, the amount of the property you're buying. So yes, you should. Next, another home ownership story. I was a banker. When I left school, I was a banker for quite a number of years. I worked for Commercial Bank of Africa for a good number of years. and. Um, until I retired, all through, I didn't change banks. I just stayed with one bank. And I was um, in CBA for close to 30 years. And um, it got to a point where I felt I needed to just change um, part of my life and part of the way I was doing things. So I left CBA and I went to, other, to do other things. Property ownership started while I was in the bank. Initially, I was still very young then. I didn't think much about um, the property. But when I became a mother, it dawned on me that I now needed to put myself together and start um, thinking about owning a property where I can bring up my child. And um, at that time, my dream house was in Nairobi South Sea. And I always dreamt about that house. It was called, um, and it is still called, the Villa Rose. 
And every time I passed by Sousi, Sousi was then a very sleepy little town. There weren't many people. It was so quiet. It was nothing like uh, Nairobi West. It was not as vibrant. It was just a quiet little place, but with beautiful houses there. So I used to pass by there and I would see Villa Rose. And I would always say, one day I'll own a villa like this one. And um, around the time I was in the bank, still very young, I used to work in the loans department. I was heading the loans department and um, I used to work very closely with the credit department. And at one time the manager credit called me and said, I know you junior officers are not supposed to get real estate loans, but look for a house and I'll approve your mortgage. And uh, he told me there are some houses coming up in Buruburu. That's the time the Buruburu properties were coming up. Maybe you could look around there and you can't believe it. I told him, I'm not going to live in Buruburu. He was shocked. One, I didn't even qualify. He was only doing me a favor. Then I'm telling him here, there's no way I'm going to move to, move to Buruburu. And he turned to his colleague and said, look at this proud beggar. She doesn't want to live in Buru. And sure enough, I didn't take the offer. But as time went on, I think it's, it began to dawn on me. I really needed a property because then I had rented an apartment in Nairobi West at the time. Nairobi West was one of the very, very nice areas in Nairobi then. So uh, with, as time went on, I thought maybe I should uh, own a house, but I still wanted a house in South Sea. Sometimes when you put your mind on something, it, it creates or it creates some opportunity. And in no time I was just looking at my paper and I saw a nested coming up in Nairobi South Sea. And I said, wait a minute, my Villa Rose is coming up. They had a show house and I left work in the evening and went direct to Nairobi West to view the show house. I didn't even need to get inside. When I just saw the outside, I said, this is what I've been dreaming about. And then immediately I went back to the office I went to my loans officer and I said there's a, there are houses coming up in Nairobi South Sea, would, um, would you approve a loan for me? And he said uh, go to the developers and get a letter from them. So I went to them and they told me to go back to the bank, confirm that I qualify for the kind of loan they wanted at the time. So I went to them, they, I went back to the bank and I told them that they gave them a letter and I was allocated a house in South Sea. The only problem at the time, the houses started very slowly and at one point they stalled. That was about 1985, um, yes, they stalled and I almost gave up. I started looking elsewhere and uh, I kept going places and I would not like what I, I didn't like the environment, I didn't like the, the community, it didn't look very friendly, but South Sea was just my dream place. So I, as I kept going around, then they again started, and they, this time they started building, and they built very fast. So come 1987, my house was ready. And 31st December 1987, I moved into my dream house in South Sea. The only thing I didn't do, I didn't name it Villa Rose. I was still, the villa was still not yet there. And that's, uh, that's how I became an owner of my first house in South Sea. How does one prepare before buying a home? What questions should one ask? and what bumps should one anticipate along the way? Well, on this segment we've got you covered with many homeowners sharing their stories. questions when buying property at the associated cost. These are third-party costs incurred during the transaction. The cost includes stamp duty, legal fees, valuation, insurance and processing fees if you're taking a mortgage. 
The cost may vary between 8 and 10 percent, depending on where the property is located. During that process, it helps if you have some extra cash. Thank you for watching The Property Show. Let's continue engaging on our social media handles. Until next week. Always there is something for everyone. Kwaheri.